Nvidia graphics card battle. And on the one hand, we have Contender A, the RTX 4070 from Asus in the Rock Strix Edition. Really a very beautiful card that I love very much. And what are we going to do? We're going to test it against the bigger brother, the GeForce RTX 4080, which is considerably more pricey. And we're going to test that in Cyberpunk, since that's a very graphics intense game with lots of ray tracing. And as you know, the Nvidia cards are great for ray tracing. That's what we're going to test them for. Guys, the pricing is still in Euro, but uh, that's what I bought them earlier this year for. So e equate that approximately in dollars. That's what the pricing was. Um, since then, the market is mostly the, uh, the newer one, the TI and the Super. But uh, the base model uh, 4070s in the OC edition, they are already very nice. And I built uh, test systems to test these graphics card. And I'm using a AM4 system. That's a system with the B550 chipset that a lot of people still have. And maybe they have already dropped the Ryzen 5800 uh, X3D cache CPU in there. That's a very powerful CPU. And you definitely need a powerful CPU the more powerful your graphics card is. Uh, let me repeat that again. The more powerful your graphics card, the more powerful should be your CPU. Otherwise you might run into bottlenecks and the bottlenecks tests are also later in this video. Now, comparing the RTX 4070 and the 4080, yeah, in low resolutions, it's 200 FPS. It's kind of the same. Only if you bump it up higher, uh, you start to see a difference uh, that shows up. If you were to use an underpowered CPU, for example, the Ryzen 5600X without the X3D cache, uh, you might lose 50 FPS uh, on the RTX 4070 and 80 in the low settings uh, and maybe 25 in the high settings. So CPU bottlenecks are real and I will show that to you in a second. But first, let's look at the test results with the 1040p resolution. And again, on the low settings, pretty close up. If you go higher to Ray Tracing Ultra, you see now that the bottleneck is moved more towards the graphics card. And as such, the RTX 4080 can show its strength. That is its massive compute performance. And uh, guys, what I really want to show you is a CPU bottleneck example. And I'm going to run the RTX 4070 in Ray Tracing Ultra and a WQHD resolution with a processor that is slightly too weak. I mean, if you would use an AMD X3D cache processor, you would not run into any bottlenecks. But as you can see here, the CPU utilization is very, very high. So there is not a lot of room anymore and you kind of see already the RTX 4070 while it still works. You sometimes have these slight dips already. You, you want to watch uh, the utilization. Uh, now we are inside, but the camera moves outside and once it, outs uh, once it, it is outside, uh, the scenes become more complex. And uh, I think the FPS are going to drop slightly so while you can use the RTX 4070 without the X3D cache CPU, we really should see some bottlenecks coming up here. There you go, 76, 68, 70%. So with Ray Tracing Ultra and WQHD with Ryzen 5600X, you are bottlenecking your RTX 4070. That would be slightly different if you would uh, use uh, medium ray tracing since I found the read ray tracing really does put a strain on your CPU. Now we're going to test the same CPU bottleneck test with the RTX 4080. And again, I selected ray tracing ultra and we're going to jump ahead again and look at the difference between the RTX 4070 and the RTX 4080. And you can see if you had an X3D cache processor, you wouldn't run into a bottleneck. Here with the Ryzen 5600X, you're seeing a bottleneck straight up here, 70% utilization. So you're really leaving significant FPS on the table if you buy a powerful graph, uh, such a powerful graphics card as an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080, and then you're using it with a CPU that's too weak. You definitely have a CPU bottleneck uh, going on here. The utilization of the CPU is pretty high. Uh, the graphics card cannot deliver the maximum 
FPS. So my recommendation would be if you get an expensive graphics card that costs over $1,000, it really does make sense to consider the X3D cache CPUs here, 60%, 50% utilization. Um, that is just you, you bottlenecking the RTX 4080 at this point. With the 4070, you can get away with it uh, to a certain degree. With the 4080, not so much. That's why we now have clearly seen that CPU balance, uh, balance CPU, GPU combination is really very important. Another consideration that you really should consider is the chipset. Um, of course, modern chipsets are nicer. Let's say, for example, you have a B650. That's a very nice chipset. Uh, the B550 also performs very strongly if you have an X3D cache CPU, uh, but not so strongly if you have a weaker CPU. And also very important besides chipset and CPU is the power supply. Consider the power supply once you get into these more powerful graphics cards as the RTX 4070. You need, it would be nice if you're building a new system to buy a power supply that has the ATX 3.0 standard because then you can use the new fancy 16 pin cables. Uh, if you accidentally, when building a new system, use the ATX 2 standard, the old ATX 2 standard, you don't have that and you need to use the adapters. So please uh, consider these things. My conclusion is the RTX 4070, that's a card that I would still use. The RTX 4080 is kind of almost too powerful. I mean, um, do you really need the RTX 4080? If you're a very competitive gamer, if you want the maximum frame rates, the maximum graphics settings, if you really want also get the X3D cache CPUs, uh, the costs are really piling up in my opinion. That can get a very expensive system. The more bigger the graphics card is, that creates these follow-on costs because you have to support that graphics card uh, with a more powerful CPU and such. And uh, also higher frame rate monitor. If you have a lot of frames, you need a high frame rate monitor to utilize that as well. So in my conclusion, I'm very happy with a RTX 4060 even. And I'm especially have happy with the sweet spot in the middle, the RTX 4070. Uh, 4080 is nice if you have the budget for it, but for me, it's not really necessary except you might want to use a uh, ultra wide monitor or super wide monitor like the Samsung Odyssey. Uh, if you have very big monitors, if you high, have high frame rate monitors, or if you want high resolution like 5K, 5K gaming at high frame rates, then RTX 4080 or even higher would be recommended. Guys, that's the conclusion. What is your favorite graphics card and CPU combo right now? What are you using? Let me know in the comments below. I would be interested. And I see you as a subscriber in the next video. Stay awesome.